Okay, welcome. Today is Canopy Conversations, the fourth in this series, and it is about living with trees. My name is Meg Morgan. I am with the Root Nashville Campaign at the Cumberland River Compact. And today we're going to talk about basic maintenance and some of our favorite tips and tricks to keep your trees healthy because the uh, you know neighborhood over here on the right has beautiful canopy but also healthy looking trees and we need that if we want our neighborhoods to look more like this picture on the right than this picture on the left. Friendly reminder to please keep yourself on mute. I will mute you if need be. Today is the fourth in the series, as mentioned, but all of the past Canopy conversations are also available on our website, rootnashville.org slash events. Um, you can hear our presentations about um, how to bring trees to your neighborhood, some of the different methods for that, what makes a good planting site. There's um, lots of good tidbits in there, so we recommend checking that out. Today, we're going to do just a little bit of background about what is the Root Nashville campaign and who we are. And then we're going to talk about maintenance and living with trees in the long term. We're going to start with young trees um, all the way up to more mature trees and some of the tips for that. And then talk about some of our problem trees as well. So just to start, what is Root Nashville? We are a citywide tree planting campaign with a very big goal of working to plant 500,000 trees in Davidson County by 2050. This is structured as a public-private partnership. So it's a campaign and it's led by the Cumberland River Compact, which is a nonprofit, which is where I work, and Metro Nashville. So the Root Nashville campaign is a Metro initiative. Um, we work very closely with Metro Water Services in particular, in addition to the mayor's office, the parks department, the Department of Transportation, and many other Metro departments. So they're committed as a city um, to this goal as well. Why are we working to plant so many trees? It's because we're losing so many trees as a city. Nashville is losing thousands of trees every year to our development and to our growth. We also lose thousands of trees when there are, you know, knock on wood, we don't have any anytime soon, but any um, terrible natural events, natural disasters like tornadoes or floods. Um, we lost thousands of trees um, in the tornado. And we're also going to be losing many, many, many thousands of trees to the invasive emerald ash borer, which is a little invasive beetle that is here to kill all of our native ash trees, unfortunately. It's estimated there's about 1.6 million ash trees in Nashville. It's about 5% of our canopy that is all going to be lost um, to this little bug. So it is, um, we're working to plant so many trees as a citywide campaign because we're losing just so many for all these different reasons. We care that we're losing so many trees because they bring us so many incredible benefits. Um, they're really essential in order to have a healthy population of people. You need a healthy tree canopy. They do things like clean our air, make sure our waterways are strong and clean, um, reduce stress and improve mental health. Just having trees around, um, even looking at them out, them at them out a window is shown to um, really provide lots of benefits to people, as well as, of course, the many benefits that they provide the environment. So we care that we're losing so many because they really do provide us with so many important benefits. As um, a campaign, we are planting all over Davidson County, but we're also focused on what we call impact areas. And those are the areas um, highlighted here in different colors. The colors don't mean anything, just to differentiate of Madison up here in the far north, North Nashville in blue, just north of downtown, and this area of South Nashville, just south of downtown. We're focusing on these areas because this is where the data shows that trees can really have a big impact and make a really big difference, maybe even more than other areas. And these areas um, are targeted for more, more intense plantings because um, we want to create an equitable tree canopy so that all Nashvillians have access to the many benefits of trees and the things that a strong canopy provides. 
So all trees can count towards this very big goal. So the partnership, the, the campaign is set up as a partnership itself. Um, but there are also many different tree planters, um, nonprofits, individuals, businesses, and government departments that are all contributing towards this one big goal. So from the Root Nashville website, you can find a map on our tree plotter where all the newly, newly planted trees are located, what types they are, who is planting them. If you plant a tree on your own, you can absolutely go and log it towards the count. This really is an effort of all of Nashville together to meet this big goal because trees are so important. I'm going to skip this for now. All right, so as we get into this, um, to talk about maintenance, I did want to start by saying the best thing you can do for healthy trees in your yard in the long term is on the preventative side. And that is really making sure that you have the right tree in the right place. We did an entire canopy conversations um, about this um, and what makes a good planting site. So if you're curious, you can go back and check that out. But did wanna start um, today by saying, really the most important thing you can do for the long term is making sure you've got the right tree in the right place. This is a graphic from uh, National Electric Service about recommendations for what size trees to have how far apart from power lines, for example. So that's one consideration to make when you're trying to plant the right tree in the right place. Did also want to say, if you've been in any Root National presentations um, with me, I do like to share this graphic. I um, want to start here because I don't want to scare anyone as we get into maintenance for trees in general. Trees are more like dandelions, very tough and hardy than like roses. Um, you can see I kind of bleeped out this, this comic right here, but I think you, you get the idea. Roses are typically more sensitive, need to be a little bit babied. Dandelions will grow anywhere, um, even in cracks in concrete. In general, trees are pretty tough. And if you um, kind of make sure you're taking some basic steps early on, um, trees will generally do well if you've got the right tree in the right place and you do some of these basic steps. They're pretty tough, they're pretty resilient. More like dandelions. All right, so let's start with young trees and some things that you can do even before getting a tree in the ground. Um, so again, there's a, there's a whole presentation about the planting side of trees and the best way to get trees in the ground, but did want to say that um, some really important things is the hole for the tree itself and making sure that you're not planting it too deep or too shallow. Um, too deep is a little bit um, worse off than planting it too high. Um, typically, you want to have that root flare, which is the part where the um, tree kind of becomes... Um, the roots right here kind of flares out right at the bottom. You want to have that even with the ground or a couple inches above the ground. So the depth of your hole is really important. Um, and you also want to have it about twice as wide as the root ball. So this is the root ball right here. You want to have it a little bit wider than that. So um, this is a picture from the internet. I would say it's not quite wide enough. I would say you would want to make this hole even a little bit wider. And it does not hurt. In fact, it will probably help the long term if you go ahead and make that hole even a little bit wider. Um, you're just going to put that back, the backfill back in um, around the tree once you've got it planted. And that can really help have that looser soil, make it a little bit easier for those roots to spread out um, as the tree starts growing. So this is a little bit closer to the right width, but again, if you want to go a little bit wider, it's only going to help the tree in the long run. Um, almost all of a tree's roots are in that first about foot and a half of soil. So almost all the tree roots are on a surface level, um, close to close to the ground, not too deep. So the more you have um, kind of tilled up and dug up soil around that area, um, the better the, the tree will do in the long run. If you can, we also recommend digging the hole, you know, at least a day or two before you plant the tree and actually watering the hole. It sounds kind of silly, but watering the hole before you even put the tree in the ground. Um, this helps kind of um, drain the area. You can see if maybe that water doesn't drain at all, um, you might want to think about maybe moving your planting um, location, but it also just helps kind of prepare the way for the tree that is to come. So we do recommend digging the hole a day or two before you actually put the tree in and actually filling 
that hole with water and letting it drain um, before you put the tree in the ground. It's possible. It's not mandatory, but it is something that we do recommend. So once you've got the tree planted, this is kind of a, a goal image of kind of what you should aim for having it looking like once you've got it in the ground. Um, and this is something you can aspire to um, in the first few years as well, um, is making sure there is a kind of a circle of mulch around the base of your tree. Again, it's not mandatory, but it is something that we recommend um, whenever possible, having this um, mulch around the base of your tree just a couple inches deep. We're not talking a foot or we're not talking, you know, six inches or more. It's really just about two inches of depth um, on that mulch around the base of your tree. Uh, this is really beneficial for lots of different reasons. It's really good for water retention and holding moisture over the summer. Um, it helps keeps this area of the tree cool in summer. Um, again, almost all of the roots are kind of towards the, the surface of the ground, so this really helps protect them. Um, and in that vein, we really, we really uh, bet, we recommend um, the mulch in this area really mostly because of protecting it from lawn mowers and weed whackers. Um, that is probably the number one, um, you know, cause of death for young trees that we have seen um, is damage around this really important kind of root flare area of the tree due to lawn mowers or weed whackers. And having this mulch around the base can really protect that from becoming an issue in the future. Future. So you'll notice the shape of this mulch as well. Um, we highly recommend more of a berm shape than a volcano. So a volcano would be kind of piled up like this um, with the height of the mulch around the base of the tree, where the berm is just the opposite, just the inverse. So um, you can see from this picture here, um, there's kind of a little bit of a hill of the mulch that actually goes down right around the base of the tree. And again, this helps with water retention. So it's guiding the water towards the really important part of the base of the tree here. Um, and it's also making sure that we're not suffocating those really important roots right there. If you have too much mulch, if you do that volcano style, um, that can actually prevent the roots from getting the oxygen that they need because tree roots do in fact need oxygen um, and can kind of drown it out from what it needs. If you've got too much mulch at the base of your tree, if you go for that volcano style, um, it's also more likely that you might get too much moisture at the bottom and too much moisture retention, um, which can cause some rotting and can cause some problems in the future. So when you're adding this mulch, go for the berm, not the volcano. You'll see this around town too. You'll see some volcano mulching and um, you'll know now that that's not, not recommended, not the way to go. So in addition to protecting your tree with mulch, watering is really the best and most important thing to do for your young trees, especially the first two summers, um, but really the first three summers um, are recommended. You really got to make sure this young tree gets water. Um, it's the most important thing you can do is make sure you've got your tree watered in this time. We recommend 10 gallons of water every week, and that's every week that it doesn't rain at least one inch. So if it rains an inch, you don't need to water that week. If it doesn't, we recommend watering 10 gallons, um, and that's per tree. So if you've got a few newly planted trees, that's 10 gallons of water every week per tree. We actually recommend only doing this once a week, so getting all of those 10 gallons um, at once and you don't want to overwater. You don't want to water every other day or even daily. This once a week um, is exactly, you know, what the tree needs, um, but it's also kind of ensuring that it's going to be strong and that you're not bathing it too much by giving it um, lots of regular watering. Actually, that once a week is um, kind of the perfect sweet spot for the long term. We recommend doing this from May through September, but keep an eye on the weather in October. Um, I know a few Octobers ago, I think it was October 2019, we had a crazy drought and it was, you know, 90, 95 degrees every day. So we were recommending watering in that month as well. So that's kind of weather dependent, but definitely May through September. If it doesn't rain an inch, you're going to want to make sure that your young trees are getting 10 gallons of water. 
If you want to be reminded, um, we have a list that we send out um, watering reminders every week, May through September, that either says, yes, you need to water your trees this week, or, hey, we received an inch of water um, in rain, you don't need to water this week. So if you would like to receive those reminders um, at any time, you can email treecare at cumberlandrivercompact.org and we can add you um, to that list. Um, I know I find them helpful for the newly planted trees that I have in my yard when I receive that email that really kind of um, pings me to remember that I need to do that that week. So there's a couple different ways you can do this, of course. Um, if your trees are, you know, located within hose distance um, for the spigot around your house, um, that's probably the easiest and best method is to put the hose right at the base of a tree. And if you can, putting the flow on pretty low and leaving it at the base of your tree for about 10 minutes or so um, gives it a really slow and deep watering and um, achieves that 10 gallons. So you can just kind of put it at the base of a tree, set a timer on your phone or your watch for 10 minutes and turn it off from there. If you don't have a hose that stretches all the way to your tree, another really easy method is just through kind of your regular five gallon buckets um, that you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's or elsewhere. And, and, and unless you're gonna use it for other things, you can drill a couple holes in the bottom of this bucket. You can kind of see a couple of them, at the bottom of this bucket here, fill it with water and then place it near the base of the tree. And it's gonna kind of give, simulate that irrigation style of the slow, deep watering through those little holes at the bottom of the bucket. And easy enough, it's a five gallon bucket. You just do that twice, there's your 10 gallons. Um, it does mean you have to haul the bucket to the base of the tree, um, but that is really kind of the, the hardest part. Not too bad and super important for the long-term health of the tree. Cannot stress that enough, making sure that you water once a week over the summer. So for young trees in particular, you might also want to think about deer protection and potentially staking those young trees. Um, this is really dependent on where you live. Um, if you live in a highly urban area of Nashville with, you know, lots of traffic and small yards, maybe you've never seen a deer in the neighborhood, you might not have to worry about this as much. Um, but in some areas, um, you know, especially with those larger yards, if you're closer to the Cumberland River, um, maybe you've seen deer around before, this is something you might want to think about ahead of time. And we definitely recommend if you do have deer in your area, you're going to want to think about having some kind of protection in place before early October. So today is September 9th. So if you don't have a deer protection plan in place um, for trees that have already been planted, you might want to think about that very soon because this is when we've noticed in Nashville, the deer um, are the most active around young trees and potentially are causing the most damage is around early to mid-October, um, kind of through mid-November or so. Um, again, weather, weather dependent, um, but some really good luck we've had and um, other planting partners have had, especially friends of Mill Ridge Park um, down near Antioch. They've been protecting their trees with a very similar system to what is photographed here, just having a couple different stakes on the side around the base of your tree and then wrapping that with wire or chicken wire, something, um, something mesh around the base. And this um, protects the tree from being rubbed on by deer or being snacked on by deer. Um, just having this kind of pretty simple structure in place. Um, the, the deer don't want to go near it. They don't want to be around. Um, I will also, with these um, slides, send information about Music City Gold, which is a biofertilizer that is actually made right here in Nashville with Metro Water, um, an all-natural organic fertilizer um, that actually is shown that deer don't like the smell of. So we have had really good luck with trees that we've planted by actually doing a very small ring of this fertilizer around the base of the tree after it's planted, We're really just using it for the scent to keep deer away instead of the actual fertilizing of the tree. And we've really um, found success with that as well. So that's kind of a, another trick. You might check out um, where to pick up some Music City Gold. And if you um, do want to stake your tree as well, this is something we um, don't typically recommend, but if you have a tree that has a strong lean to it, um, or if you want to try staking it as deer protection, um, what we recommend doing is having one or two stakes about um, 
distant as this photo is showing, very loosely tied to the tree. You don't want it to be too tight because that actually the, the tree needs to be able to move a little bit in the wind. That actually makes it stronger in the long term. It kind of builds up that reaction wood um, to the wind and to weather events. So if you do choose to stake a tree, we recommend doing that very lightly, um, making sure that whatever is around the trunk of the tree itself is not too tight because that tree will grow faster than you might think and you don't want that to kind of choke out the, the chunk or the growth of the tree. Um, so if you do stake, um, it's really more than stability. Um, it can be a deer protection um, measure as well, um, because that is something that the deer don't want to go up to it if it, there's kind of foreign or um, you know unexpected objects kind of near the tree. That's um, another strategy you can put in place. Um, it's also really good, again, to protect trees from lawn mowers or from weed whackers is having those stakes around. That's just another way to um, kind of make sure you're, you're not getting too close to the base of your tree. So on young trees in particular, especially in the first few years, um, this is something you're going to want to look out for. So these are called suckers or water spouts sometimes. And this, it almost looks like new trees are trying to grow or new branches are trying to grow um, from the base of your tree. And um, this does happen fairly often with newly planted trees. Um, there's a lot of shock involved. If you can imagine, you know, these um, one inch caliber, one and a half inch caliber trees have been growing for at least three, sometimes five or six years already. And then they're, you know, quickly, you know, balled up from the nursery, moved somewhere, plopped in the ground. There's a a lot of transplant shock that happens um, with these newly planted trees and this is kind of something that can happen from that shock is the growth of these suckers as they're known or as they're called. Um, this is something you are going to want to remove on your newly planted trees or these suckers. Um, we'll typically remove them or prune them um, whenever we see them kind of any time of year um, you don't want the energy of the growth going towards these suckers instead of going up towards the main um, central leader of the tree where you want that growth to go. Um, so if you kind of trim these up um, when you see them, um, that will help in the long term growth of your tree. So it's also kind of helpful to just think about what a tree is doing at different times of year and um, you know, knowing that at different times it is taking up water differently, behaving differently, that can kind of make you think about maintenance in general. So there's seasons to thinking about this, of course. Um, we think about it in a couple different ways. There's either growing season or dormant. So growing season is about April through September, sometimes October or so. Um, and then when the leaves start falling is when the trees go dormant for the year. So that's going to be about mid-October um, through about end of March or so. Again, some of that is weather dependent. But when those trees are dormant, not a lot is happening in that time. Um, the roots might be spreading out or growing a little bit, um, but for the most part, you can kind of think of your trees as sleeping during this period. Um, we, had, we had one question or one instance where it's not recommended and it's not a case of right tree, right place, but someone wanted to move um, a tree that they had planted in the planting season. They had planted it in, um, I think, late October, wanted to move it, you know, early March and had asked, oh, but if we move it, you know, it's already had that whole season of, you know, growth and time to settle in. And now we're going to be moving it. Is that going to harm it? Um, and we actually said, no, if you do have to do this, and again, you shouldn't have to, if you've got right tree, right place, um, over that time period, the tree was actually not doing a whole lot. It was, it was dormant in that time. So if you do need to do that, you want to do that while the tree is dormant. That's why planting season is during this time. So planting season overlaps with when the trees are dormant. So it's about mid-October through about the end of March is when you want to plant trees. And that's because um, it will kind of decrease the amount of transplant shock. Um, the trees are spending so much of their energy over growing season towards growing and towards, you know, photosynthesis and um, getting the food it needs, um, you know, through the leaves and sunlight and everything. So you want to plant them outside of this time period. So 
that is um, kind of some of the some of the reasoning for that. Um, and another way to think about kind of a year in the life of trees is either planting season when the trees are dormant versus watering season. So while the tree is growing, while it's in that period, um, that's when you're going to want to make sure your newly planted trees are receiving those um, 10 gallons of water every week. So not within the first few years of planting, but we recommend year three after your trees have been planting, checking out your tree and seeing if it needs some very light structural pruning. Um, this is not um, extreme. This is very light, if anything. Um, you might look at the structure of your tree and decide, you know what, I don't think it needs, it's very evenly balanced. I don't think it needs any pruning at all. That is totally okay. Um, and, you know, in the wild, in forests, um, trees are not receiving pruning and do just fine. Um, but at year three is when you're going to want to kind of assess and see, okay, do, do I want to make sure um, you know, the, the overall structure of this tree is strong and healthy. Are there any kind of strategic pruning cuts I need to make in order to make sure this tree is going upright in the direction that I want it to? This graphic is kind of extreme. I don't know very many trees that look like this one on the far right here, that 15 years after planting. That is looking rough. I don't know many unpruned trees that actually look like that. Um, but you can kind of get an idea when compared to the next image that I'm gonna show you. So this is um, an example. Okay, it's what it, what it could look like without pruning, but with some very light, again, very light structural pruning, you can train it to look more like this tree um, pictured here on the right. So um, this might involve um, if you have, you know, two, um, you know, main stems of your tree that kind of both look like they could be the lead um, kind of trunk of the tree, you might want to pick the more dominant one or the larger one to kind of train that to be your central leader that will just make the tree stronger, you know, in the long run, if you kind of do have that um, clear central leader at the top. But this is not something we recommend doing after the first few years of planting um, and just looking at at about um, that third year. Um, and when you do prune, um, there's lots of tips online. There's lots of videos. Um, I will link some after this of some of our recommended resources. You don't want to remove very much and you just want to do this for structure. You don't want to cut the ends of the branches. It's really just for um, improving that overall structure of the tree. We also get a lot of questions about whether or not having other plants around the base of newly planted trees is recommended or not. In general, I would say kind of as a tree is settling and getting used to its new space within that first few years or so, probably just having that mulch around the tree is the best bet and not having other plants. Um, if you did want to have something, maybe something small that isn't taking up or taking over that whole space, so something more like this picture on the right over here. Um, but also, again, keep in mind that most of those trees' roots are going to be towards the top, so that's why we don't recommend having huge plants around the base early on. <clears throat> But later, as a tree becomes more mature, um, this is absolutely something you can think about adding to your landscape, to your garden. Um, so having this look something more like this photo over here on the left. Um, if there are any Doug Tallamy fans um, listening to this, Tallamy is T-A-L-L-A-M-Y, um, a author and um, believer in native plants in the landscape. He talks a lot about having multi-layered landscapes because that's really strong. Um, one of the best things you can do for a strong, wild, urban ecosystem is kind of have these layered layers of vegetation. So if you've got a nice big tree, you might want to think about having something medium and something small as well. Um, when caterpillars in particular are um, living on trees They'll be born on the tree and then fall to the base and having some vegetation down there um, can really help support um, their growth. And caterpillars are in many ways kind of a foundation of um, our local ecosystems. So it's super, super important to think about what they might be needing. All right, so that's a lot about young trees and how to keep young trees um, healthy and strong. But I want to make sure we also share some um, tips and important information about more mature trees. 
ivy in particular. So this um, photo over here on the right is a tree that's been almost entirely um, choked out and really starved by ivy, especially English ivy. Um, so if you do have a situation like this, we strongly recommend, you know, not letting it get to that point. If you see some ivy starting to creep up a tree, um, the sooner you can, um, you know, nip that, the better. Um, you can kind of cut it like this um, image is showing right here kind of at the base all the way around the trunk. And that's really all you have to do. You can leave it where it is. It will kind of naturally, um, you know, die off and do what it needs to do. Um, but uh, this is something to maybe talk to your neighbors about if they have ivy that's creeping up their trees or if you have any in your yard, it might look kind of cool, but it is not good for the long-term health of the tree to have that ivy growing on it. So we strongly recommend um, cutting that ivy off at the base all the way around the trunk of the tree if you do have that and potentially talking to your neighbors and friends um, if you see this in their yard as well. So again, going back to pruning, you know, that year three kind of light structural pruning um, is really important on young trees, but what about more mature trees or what about after that year three, do you need to continue pruning or not? Again, it is not always necessary, but it is something to kind of think about maybe every three to five years or so. Um, and this is again, just for structure only and for the long-term, um, you know, upward growth of the tree. And you might want to think about doing this depending on where the trees are located in your yard. So if you have a um, very large tree pretty close to your house, um, you might want to think about doing some structural pruning or hiring a professional to do some structural pruning um, to kind of lighten up some of that space and make sure that the structure is as strong as it can be if it's close to your house, um, just for safety reasons. If you have a large tree further away and you've got a big backyard and it's way back there and there aren't any structures nearby, you probably don't have to um, think about doing this once the tree is kind of already at a, at a mature size. Probably don't have to worry about it if it's far enough away. Um, after that kind of year three, though, is when you're really going to want to make sure that you are either doing lots and lots of research on your own and feel confident about where to make those cuts. Um, but really asking and hiring a professional is really the um, highly recommended route if you want to prune your trees um, after they are already mature. Um, they can even also, you know, do a consultation about all the trees in your yard, a professional certified arborist, um, and then maybe you can take whatever next steps you would like after that, um, but would definitely recommend bringing in a certified arborist um, at that point. So again, um, continuing to think about mulch, even with mature trees, is recommended and really important. You would really ideally like to still be able to see the flare at the base of the trunk, even in mature trees. Um, so you'll, you'll notice, um, even with mature trees, I'm looking at one out my front window right now, um, it was maybe planted a little bit too deep you know, 30, 40 years ago, because I cannot see it, this flare at all, um, might be time to kind of get in there a little bit, clear some of that dirt away, um, and make sure you've got a berm shape of mulch instead of this volcano, which you did not want, which will kind of um, potentially cause some problems down the line. So here's, here's another friend, the, the caterpillar, right, chewing on um, a leaf, making it very holy. Um, again, I'm uh, referring to Doug Tallamy on this one, but he has something, I think it's called the five, five foot test. Um, but if you can step back five feet and you don't really notice, you know, that a leaf has been chewed on or eaten, um, it's recommended that you don't really worry about it because you kind of have to think about your tree as part of the ecosystem overall, right? Um, if it's providing um, some nourishment for some of our, you know, insect friends, our insect population is decreasing, which is bad for the entire ecosystem. Um, this is actually good. This means that your tree is a functioning part of the ecosystem if it gets chewed on a little bit. Um, as long as there is not, you know, totally overtaken and the, all of the leaves are eaten, the leaves will come back um, next growing season, um, will be just fine. Um, so in general, if you notice that your, your leaves are getting chewed on a little bit, it shouldn't be anything to worry about unless it is, you know, 
a new brand new thing you've never noticed on your mature tree before, or if it is kind of taking over the entire tree. Um, again, this is something it's very hard to self diagnose um, pests and diseases on trees, um, even with, you know, people with lots of experience in the field, really relying on your certified arborist to help diagnose any potential issues is highly recommended. What about fertilizing trees, um, young or old, right? Is this recommended? Is this not? Um, in general, fertilization is something we don't recommend for young trees. Um, they should really have everything that they need in the soil, especially if you're planting native trees that grow here naturally. Um, the fertilizer can actually be more shocking to the system um, early when a tree is young than actually beneficial. It could be the case when a tree is older and more mature um, that it could use a little bit of help or maybe it's, um, you know, will in certain areas that you'd like it not to. But again, we do not recommend doing this unless you have the um, advice of a certified arborist. So in general for fertilizer, probably not recommended for young trees. Maybe that's something that could be applied in more mature trees if an arborist kind of gives the recommendation. Really want to highlight this one. This is a top pet peeve. Make sure, you know, we talked about structural pruning, which is very different than topping trees. Do not top your trees ever. End of story. It actually makes the trees more dangerous in the long term. It is a safety concern. It's also ugly. Topped trees do not look good. And it is um, better if you do, if you're concerned about, um, you know, safety to make sure that it is pruned properly instead of topped. Um, pruning, or excuse me, topping um, actually makes your trees more dangerous in a storm, um, which is actually kind of, you know, counterintuitive. You might think that if you top all the trees, um, if you top all the branches of your trees, you know, there's less there. It's more likely, you know, that it won't blow over in a storm, but it actually causes so many problems because it stresses the tree out. It doesn't have, you know, any, any leaves anymore. It's a food source. Um, the branches that regrow from those topped areas are so weak um, that it's actually worse in the long run. So do not top your trees ever. You'll notice it a lot, unfortunately, once you start paying attention to this. Um, so talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, um, spread this message that you do not ever want to top your trees. These are some photos of what topped trees look like. So you can kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about here. So topping is different than structural pruning in that it is cutting off, you know, every branch from the tree. Um, and this is what it looks like as they start to regrow, right? Like you'll see these desperate measures by the tree to kind of come back. Um, these are going to be less um, strongly attached branches, weaker branches in the long term. This is what it looks like without um, your leaves. It really is trying to frantically grow from all of these wounds that are being um, inflicted. Um, so it just, it just doesn't look good, but it also is really bad um, safety wise in the long term. Um, if you see trees that kind of have this structure right here too and this kind of little line drawing, um, that's kind of a way to tell that a tree has been topped in the past when it's really those so, so, so many branches all spouting from um, certain locations all going straight up. That's the sign of a topped tree versus a pruned tree, which has a much more um, overall stronger structure. So again, if you do have a specific question, especially about a mature tree, really you're gonna to wanna to make sure you hire a certified arborist. Um, the certification being the important part there. Who does the topping of these trees that we you know, looked at in these past few slides? Um, those are not, hopefully, your certified arborists. Those are, um, you know, just tree care kind of general companies, and they will, you know, perform those services when clients ask for them. Um, 
And so that's why you really just want to make sure you have a certified arborist. You can find one through this website by just typing in your zip code. You can find a whole big long list of all the certified arborists in your area. This is provided by the International Society of Arboriculture. Um, Treesaregood.org slash find an arborist and you will get a list and that is um, strongly recommended um, if you do have a specific question. They can kind of come out and perform a you know, consultation in general. Um, it can be, you know, a one-time um, affair that, um, you know, you get advice about maybe multiple trees on your property, and then you can make the decision about what you'd like to do from there based on that advice. So very quickly did kind of want to mention our problem trees, Bradford's hackberries, silver maples, oh my, these are the ones we definitely hear the most um, complaints or problems with. These are not trees that we are planting through the Root Nashville campaign. Um, most of them are strongly prohibited, in fact, and um, not recommended. Um, so Bradford pear, it's a type of calorie pear. It was very heavily planted um, in the maybe 70s, 80s, maybe even up to the 90s, um, all over the country, but definitely in Nashville. You'll see a lot of these um, around. They do have these lovely blooms, um, but these are invasive trees. Um, so that means they spread and take over areas really easily. They're not native to this area. Um, they're very weak trees overall in terms of structure. Um, they're always breaking and causing problems. Um, so people will ask us sometimes like, oh, I have a Bradford pear you know, should I, should I top it? Should I remove it? Should I do some of these, you know, things that we typically wouldn't recommend? Um, Bradford's in particular, if you're able to just go ahead and remove that tree, um, that would really be, you know, the most recommended if you're able to. Of course, um, following up on that, if you're going to remove a, um, a Bradford pear, we strongly recommend replanting, replanting, um, you know, a native species, getting something else in that, in its place. Those are probably the worst worst offenders in many um, many's eyes are these Bradford pears, um, but we also hear a lot about hackberry trees. Um, these are very very common in this area. Um, you can recognize them. They have a very warty bumpy bark and they're often quite large. These are a native species. They're not invasive, but then they are native. Um, but they can cause a lot of problems in storms or just with branches falling. Um, I typically will say about hackberries, since they are native and they're not invasive, if you have hackberries that are farther away from your house that aren't going to cause any potential problems um, falling, um, just, just personal opinion would recommend keeping them um, because they are, you know, a native species. They do kind of provide um, important food for robins in particular. Robins love those berries. Um, but if you do have it close to your house, you want to think about maybe hiring an arborist to maybe do an assessment to see if certain branches might need to be removed um, or if it's too much of a problem, um, you know, maybe, maybe removing that tree entirely, but replanting. Same kind of goes for silver maples. We don't hear as many issues about them, but they are also known to have weak branches um, and overall weak structure. Um, so we aren't planting any of these. And again, same same as kind of the hackberries. If it's far enough away from your house, probably don't need to worry about it. They are native, um, but if it's closer, that might be something you want to keep an eye on and think about. All right, and as we are wrapping up here, um, did want to mention some upcoming tree opportunities, um, both kind of directly with the Root Nashville campaign, but also with some of the campaign's partners. Um, there is a tree giveaway coming up, um, one of several, um, with our friends at the Nashville Tree Foundation. The first one is on September um, 11th up here at Green Hills Park. Um, so if you're looking to bring trees to your neighborhood, this is kind of one of the um, first opportunities of the upcoming planting season. There's also something very specific species that you have your eye on and you would like a larger tree. would strongly recommend checking out the tree sale from our friends at the Nashville Tree Conservation Corps. 
you can place your order in kind of a rolling ongoing basis. Um, this batch of orders is going to close at about the end of September or early October um, to get that delivery in at the very beginning of next planting season. Again, all of these trees, um, you know, through the National Tree Foundation and through the National Tree Conservation Corps and others are all part of, you know, the Root National Campaign and the citywide effort to kind of, um, you know, reforest and restore our city's canopy. So definitely recommend giving them a follow and checking out these opportunities. Um, through the Root National Cam Campaign in particular, we also have a program called the Neighborhood Planting Captain Program. And this is where you can apply to be a captain and bring 50 or more free large trees to your neighborhood. And it's your job to spread the word in your neighborhood and tell people that these trees are available. We accept applications on a rolling basis, and you can apply at the Root Nashville website, um, rootnashville.org. You go to the Get Involved tab at the top, and then the Planting Captain page is one of the first buttons you can click, and then you can learn more from there. But we're always looking for more captains. This is absolutely something that you can do in your own neighborhood to you know, help restore our city's canopy and be a part of this. Um, we need as many kind of grassroots neighborhood involvement as we can, and being a captain, volunteering for your neighborhood is um, really one strong way that you can do that. All right, so I will um, pause the recording here in a few moments and take any other questions, but did also want to share contact information. If you have um, anything else that you're wondering about living with trees and about basic tree maintenance in the long term, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. If we don't know the answer, we will also um, reach out to some of our arborist contacts or you know, recommend reaching out to a certified arborist, but we're happy to answer any questions as we can. And with that, planting season is coming up around the corner. So I hope you are thinking about how to protect your trees over the winter, um, but also how to potentially plant some new trees if you have room in your yard through some of these different measures. So look forward to being connected and I will see if there are any questions now. <laughs>